For the various series that we have seen so far, it's worth taking a few moments and talking about notation. Let's pay attention to the summation notation that we have used. So for example, when we looked at the exponential series, we could write that as the sum as k goes from zero to infinity of one over k factorial times x to the k. Now we can also write that as one plus x plus x squared over two factorial plus x cubed over three factorial, etc., etc., etc. But this summation notation is nice. It's very compact and it tells you exactly what to do to write out that series. It's kind of like an algorithm. So what we do is we take that index k and you can use any letter you feel like. But we start at, in this case, k equals zero and add all of the terms as specified under the summation sign. So when k equals zero, I have one over zero factorial times x to the zero. That is, of course, one. Then we add to it what happens when k equals one. We get one over one factorial times x to the one. That is simply x. The k equals two term is one over two factorial x squared. k equals three. k equals four. Keep going. Keep going. Writing down all these terms, it is sometimes useful to write out the nth term when k equals n, in this case, one over n factorial x to the n. Now, with this notation, you can specify any series you like. For example, consider the sum as k goes from 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the k plus 1 divided by k times x to the k. What is this going to give us? Well, follow the instructions. This time, begin with k equals 1. Substitute that into the expression. I get negative 1 to the 2 divided by 1 times x to the 1. That simplifies to x. The k equals 2 term is what? I have negative 1 cubed divided by 2 times x squared. That is minus 1 half x squared. When k equals 3, you can check that this is 1 third x cubed. When k equals 4, we get negative 1 fourth x to the fourth. Keep going, keep going, up until the nth term, which looks just like what we have under the summation sign, but with an index of n. Now what you will notice is that there's nothing special about using k factorial. We can use any kind of function of k we want, pretty much. The other thing that you will notice in this example is that having that negative one to an index gives you what is called an alternating series, a series that varies plus minus plus minus plus minus in its terms. Now, this is just a random example. Of course, this doesn't look like any function that we've ever seen before. Hmm, more on that later. For now, let's take what we've learned about the summation notation and apply it to the series that we have derived for the basic trig functions. For cosine of x, which is 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial, keep going, keep going. And for sine of x, what was that guy? That was x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial minus x to the 7th over 7 factorial. Keep going, keep going. How do we convert these into summation notation? The first thing to notice is that these are alternating series. Their terms vary plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. We just saw an example of how to do that in summation notation. The second interesting feature is that we're skipping powers. We either have all the even powers with cosine or the odd powers with sine. The way we're going to encode that in summation notation is as follows. For cosine, we're going to take the sum as k goes from zero to infinity of what? We're going to have a negative one to the k. That's going to start us off with a positive term and then switch positive, negative, positive, negative. Then 
for the rest of it, we're not going to have x to the k divided by something. Mm -mm. We're going to have x to the 2 times k divided by quantity 2 times k factorial. That's going to give us only even powers of x, and you can check to make sure that this is correct. Once you're comfortable with that, it will be easy to see what we do to modify this to get a summation notation for the sine series. We're going to take the sum, k goes from 0 to infinity, of negative 1 to the k times x to the 2k plus 1 divided by quantity 2k plus 1 factorial. Now, in this and in all examples, be very careful with the index. It really matters whether you start with k equals 0, k equals 1, what the power of that negative 1 term is. If you're careful with this notation, you will find it very valuable.